Hello everybody, this is Matt from Megalo Mobile, and today we're going to be taking a look at how you can create your very own animated parallax background animation, just like I've got here for my menu system in my game, Subspace Shortcuts. I think it looks really great, and I think you'll really enjoy the results. It's super easy, so let's take a look at how we've achieved it. So first of all, we'll go over to the Unity Editor, and we'll play the scene and have a look at what the scene actually looks like without the menu overlay over the top. To be honest, I think it looks great. You've got the nebula gases look like they're blowing in the solar winds. The planets are both animated at different speeds, which really gives that sense of depth, that sense of perspective, which is what we really want when we're working on a parallax animation. But to give a better idea of how the parallax animation is working, let's have a quick look in 3D mode, and we can see how the different animations are layered. So in the background, you've got the stars and the nebula, which is a static image. Then you've got the gases over the top, with the planets at different layers, at different speeds, moving along the image as well. Now that we have a good understanding of how the animation itself is going to work, we can go ahead and get some assets to include in our scene. Now, I've got mine from opengameart.org. It's a fantastic resource. It's completely free. All you need to do is have a good read of the license restrictions and make sure to attribute anything you download correctly. This planet pack is perfect for what we have in mind, and um, as I'm not a graphics designer, I would not be able to come anywhere near close to making something as good as these, these pictures here, so I'm really glad that a resource like this exists. I will include a, a link in the description below, and as you can see here, the license is included in the, in the, in the raw there that I've just extracted. For the space picture that's going to go in the background, I'm going to get it from the Pixabay, which is another great resource. Everything is completely free, and often you'll find you can use the images for commercial purposes. And if you log in, you can sometimes get them in higher definition, which is what I've done here for this picture of a fantastic looking nebula. To do the particle effects, I'm using a technique that I actually found on YouTube, and I'll link the video in the description. It was by Mr. WASD, and rather than um, go through and show you exactly what the content of his video is, I'm just going to quickly rush through it on the screen and you can go and watch his own video at your leisure and when you have your material made for the particle emitter, come back and we'll crack on. So I'm going to start by making a new game object, I'm going to call this one Nebula, and then I'm going to drag the picture I got from the Pixabay onto the scene and resize it like this. Now normally I wouldn't recommend warping a picture so that it's all out of shape like this, but because there's no circles or you know, large objects in this, it's absolutely fine. However, for the planets, when they get added to the scene, I do recommend resizing them and keeping the aspect ratio the same. So I add both planets on. I've got a big one and I've got a small one. I'm going to name them near and far, respectively. And then what we'll do is we'll set up the, the viewing distance, so to make sure that they overlap each other correctly. And the way I'm going to do this is by resetting the transform on Nebula, dragging each item onto Nebula, and then one by one going through each of them and setting the distance so that they're different distances apart so you can give a good indication of what's in front of what. But what I'll also do is I'll go into the layers and I'll change the layer and I'll make the closest planet layer 3, the planet behind it layer 2, and I'll leave the background at 0 for the time being. That means when I create the particle effect I can put that at layer 1 and nothing will overlap it, anything else in a way that doesn't quite look right. start by making the animation, select Nebula, and we're going to add the position, the transform position of each of the three items we have there on the scene. We'll start by going to the end of the animation, which is one second in, and we'll move the background to the end position that we want it to be in. Now, of course, one second is too short for a, a video like this, so of course we're going to extend the time to 20 seconds, and look, that speed looks just, just about right for what the purposes we're going for. Next thing to do is to do a similar thing with the planets. Now, because the planets are all going at different speeds, that means you need to pick them up at different points and have them end at different points. With the background moving the slowest, the next slowest will be the green planet here, the, the far planet. So we'll have that one end around 15 seconds, and the near planet end around 10. Now, we've got to be careful that they don't bounce back at the end of the animation because, of course, the keyframe will send it back to where it started. But you can always 
delete the final keyframe and that prevents them from moving when they reach the end of the scene. Having a quick look at that, I mean, already the parallax effect is working. That's looking great. And if we wanted to, we could end there, say job well done and everything would be happy. But of course you can make this look that extra bit more exciting with only a small time spent using a particle emitter. So we're gonna add one to the scene and as you can see it's emitting behind the background image. So we'll change the layer to one, like we said we we're going to do earlier. And we'll change the emission shape from a cone to a circle. And unfortunately it is um, emitting in the wrong direction, but we can change this really easily by going to the x-axis of the particle emitter and resetting that one. So look, it's going in the right direction now. Excellent. We can now use the material that we created watching Mr. WASD's video and we can drag that onto our particle emitter. That will make all these white dots turn into little puffs of smoke. Now that you have the little smoke dots, you can resize them at start and make them a little bigger and also reduce the speed of emission to slow down a bit. But you may notice they're popping in and out of existence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the alpha of the particles to zero at the start and zero at the end, but full in the middle. So they sort of fade in and out of existence. Next, I randomize the rotation and I also set the alpha, the initial alpha of the cloud lower, so because at the moment it's really dominating the scene, and I can resize it as well um, to sort of this sort of shape that I'm after. And now that I've got this sort of shape more akin to the background, I can change the color too. And look here, if we um, if we use the tool on the left hand side, you can sort of move the mouse around and sort of. Uh, blend it in with the background and then you can focus on the shape that you want. Um, rather than do the same thing again, I'm just going to copy paste. Copy paste each one of these over the next one and move it to a different area. Resize, you can change the speed if you want, you can make it look a little different. You can use blue ones, you can use red ones, um, you can use whatever color is, um, is needed for your scene. And um, by matching the colors to the background, you're going to get a much better effect. So see for this one here, I'm going to duplicate that one there and make this one red because of course the nebula is more red in this section and it does mean changing the shape a bit. Maybe it means amending the alpha, but these are all things that you can play with and you're going to get the best effect just by messing around with it a little bit to see what you can do. Once you're happy, set to the particle emitters as children of the background and you're good to go. Just press play and there you have it. A really fast, really easy, great looking, parallax effect animated background that you can use in your own game and i like mine so much that i'm going to be using it in the end card for this very video so thank you very much for taking the time to have a watch i hope you learned something i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please hit like please hit subscribe and please do check out the trailer to subspace shortcuts i worked really hard on it and um, there's a link on the screen right now this channel is very new so every subscriber counts and i'm really looking forward to what you have to say in the comments I'll see you around.